Uh, yes. As soon as I hit live, I realized that there was one thing that I had forgotten. I'm technically streaming at 60 FPS right now, but it's not going to make a difference. It should still provide you with 30 FPS video because OBS will recognize that this is not actually 60 FPS source. So therefore, yeah, it shouldn't actually make a difference. But you know, that was my genuine reaction to the realization that there was something that I had forgotten. But fortunately, it was not a big deal. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Doom Link's Life Hunt. We are regrettably here in Generations Ultimate. What does he mean, regrettably? Well, I would have preferred to play 3 Ultimate. But there was precisely one room open, and it was full. There were four people playing, and I was the fifth. Very occasionally, you can get really lucky and have a situation where that, well, fourth guy, you being the fifth, is actually not in a room, so there is space for you. Today was not one of those days, and I can live with that. Maybe, well, I can live with it, but I don't have to be happy about it, I suppose is the point. I don't know, uh, well, no, I was in here for a reason. You can see that I am in need of hot drinks. I will go and purchase them, and then we will head online. I had a bit of a mishap. In the last recording that I did, I spilt white wine all over my keyboard. I should clarify that that was not a Monster Hunter recording, that was my Dark Souls recording. I was... Uh, I don't know, I think what happened was I was placing my... I, it had happened so suddenly that I didn't even know how it had happened immediately after the fact, but basically watching back the footage, because indeed it did occur on camera, I realised that I was placing my glass of white wine on the table in front of me, but it got caught on a part of the table which is designed to, well, that's a long story, but basically there's this object on the table which caused it. And basically I placed it down, but it was not placing itself down on a flat surface. And I had let go of it, but it was not resting on a flat surface, so it tipped over and the contents of the glass ended up inside my keyboard. I have yet to see if that keyboard still works. Quite frankly, I don't care. I was meaning to get a new keyboard anyway, because that one, quite frankly, was a little bit too large for my setup. I have made adjustments to my setup as well. I removed the thing in question that I seemingly cannot describe to you in a way that you can that you'd be able to understand to what it is I'm even referring. But yeah, that was removed, and I got a keyboard that is much more appropriately sized. And there is an additional benefit to having purchase this keyboard as well, and it is the fact that it is, it's called a multi-device keyboard. It actually allows me to place my phone in a little ridge at the top of it, and it's a small but fairly heavy keyboard. It obviously has that nice build quality feel to it, and no doubt it is a heavy keyboard so that it can quite comfortably hold tablets and the like. So yeah, it's very nice that I do have that. I no longer have to very awkwardly have my phone sitting there, you know. It, then that's not quite what I want to... No, no. Can I have the chat expanded, please? I want the chat to... <sighs> I'm using my other phone, by the way, my backup phone. But, um... Yeah, okay, so can you show me the, the full chat? No, not the small chat. I had set it up in the way that I wanted it on my other phone, but on this phone I'm just having to work out how I like that. These guys may very well be waiting for me, but they're going to have to wait a little longer because right now I'm... Like, what the f... Doomlink Lives Rewards, this is irrelevant, I don't care. You may very well have not been able to see anything when I just showed you that. Um, there's no button that I can see that would allow me to... No, I'm not going to gift a sub to myself. Um... I can drag it, maybe? Dragging it did not really... Okay, yes, it's my live stream. Can I only see the chat, please? I have no need to see anything more than that. Maybe I don't usually put it in landscape. That must be what it is. I usually just keep it portrait. Well, I can possibly... Oh, no. Yeah, this keyboard is so robust that I can actually have my phone sitting there very comfortably and very sturdily in portrait mode. Like, I'm pushing it and it's not moving. So, it can actually fucking sit there in portrait mode quite splendidly displaying 
a large section of the chat for me to monitor. Someone left, and I don't know if that's because I was taking too long to do anything, or if because the guy lost interest in general. I would not be surprised if it were the former, because people are literally that impatient in this community. Even then, even having said that, I'm sure you guys are going, oh yeah, right, Doomlink, as if that would actually happen. I have fucking footage, I have video evidence of this sort of impatience. Admittedly, I haven't compiled it for you to see, but, you know, if you go through my recordings, you'll find it's not that unusual. But anyway. Yeah, it's a nice little keyboard, and I'm very happy with it. And also, hello, JK. Um... Yeah, uh, I suppose because I can't really demonstrate it here, I'm not going to go to great lengths to describe it to you, because it's not really worth it, but uh, yeah, it's a nice enough keyboard for sure. Much more appropriate for my setup. And my table is also much more appropriate now that I got rid of this weird thing that was in the way. <sighs> it was basically a... In fact, no, I can't really show it to you. It's still on my table, but not within reach, so I can't show you after all. But it was, imagine like this... Um, rectangular bar at the bottom of the table which was designed to, if you were to tilt the table up, prevent something from sliding off it. Um, that was very frustrating for hand placement when using the keyboard, so I got rid of that damn thing. Fortunately it was screwed in and not glued on. I thought it was glued on at first and I was a bit worried, but no, it is screwed in and so I was able to just remove, remove, blah, blah, remove the screws and that's the end of that. Chaos is changing his equipment, and I shall be doing the same. What's the monster again? It's something obvious, something... Oh yeah, it's Teosha. I will bring a Gunlance, because I'm in a Gunlance mood for reasons that I cannot possibly make sense of. But that's apparently what I feel like doing. What I don't really feel like doing is using this particular Gunlance, but I want to use a Gunlance against Teostra, so I'll use this. An alternative, indeed, would be water, but I actually would rather use this than use a water weapon against a Teostra at this very moment. Why I am so picky and, I suppose, um, there is a word that I'm looking for, but I'm, I cannot grasp at it. Uh, may also start with F, actually. Well, whatever. I, for one reason or another, would rather deal with this. Uh, yes, I'm still upside down tech, and also hello beans. Well, I share the keyboard on Discord. Um, I mean, I can show it to you right now, honestly. It's it's nice. It's a Logitech keyboard. It's probably fairly well known, but it's, it's nice and heavy, and what I love about it is that it's quite perfect for what I like, and quite frankly, it doesn't look all that impressive on camera. Um, I work in, in technology retail, and I also do repairs, and one of these came in for repair one day, and I was familiar with the keyboard itself, but I'd never seen it out of its packaging, and so I happened to see it, and I held it, and I'm like, wow, this is a fucking solid keyboard, this is, like, heavy in the hand, and is much nicer than I was expecting, and that sort of inspired me to buy it one day, and that day has come. So, there you go. So, um... I don't think we're waiting for a fourth, but... I would sort of like to, because I'd also like to pour myself a beverage. My beverage today... <laughs> you can't imagine with me dealing with customers. I don't like calling it retail. I mean, it's more of a it's more of a sales sort of thing. Like, imagine I'm on a on a shop floor selling tech stuff to people. Not like, I mean, I'm not hardcore into it. Like, I'm not fucking going around trying to sell people fifty things when they came in for one thing. I'm not that, and I don't get paid commission on that shit. But you know, it's it's sort of like that. Uh, it's a long story. I mean, it's it's good work. I enjoy it. It's better than working as a as a waiter. I used to be a waiter in a restaurant, so that was much more customer facing, to be honest. Oh, before I open the beer, it is um, Dolce Noir, Imperial Stout. I'm assuming that I at least pronounced that semi-correctly. No, I'm not French, clearly. 
but um, yeah, it's an Imperial Stout which was at the place that I bought it. Advertised qua rare and limited, which I don't know drew me to it. The description on the back says the third installment of our favourite adjunct laden stout. This year's rendition has been fermented cold with our house lager yeast, uh oh, lager, and has been conditioned on mountains of toasted hazelnut. Maybe mountains is a bit bit of an embellishment. And has been oh yeah, has been conditioned on mountains of toasted hazelnut and coconut. Dolce Noir exudes richness. It's time to stop living down there and start living up here. Well, I'm going to start living up here in a moment. Yes, I do tell customers to... Shoo. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. I believe it's similar to the onomatopoeia for telling someone to shush. So, it must be... Shoo. Like, shoo. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not fucking Portuguese, okay? And I'm also not Brazilian. It's probably Brazilian more than Portuguese. Um, the glass that I'm pouring this into, and I do realise that I am probably about to be engaging a Teostra. Or perhaps not. I guess he doesn't start here in this game. Um, but yeah, the glass that I'm pouring this into is a glass that has quite regrettably gone unused for far too long. It's my Tremont glass, which is, you know, lovely beer, and it has... I have a glass for it, but I never get to drink this beer anymore. JK and Tech are both making... Uh, Hunsterverse references in the chat, which is, I'm sure, terribly welcomed. Um, what is going on with this flavour? I, I have to stop and take a moment to try this again. This is, this is a little different to what I was expecting. The alcohol by volume percentage is 9.2. Bit of a step down from the 14 that I had last time. But I prefer something closer to 9, honestly. Just generally. I like to drink my beers slow, but not too slow, you know. Um, I'm not too sure if I like this. Quite frankly, it's, uh, it's okay. But... It's not the most stupendous Imperial Stout I've ever had. Maybe I need some time to enjoy it, and maybe I need a few more. I need to savour the flavour, you see. No! I do not want to be hit while blasted. This is n precisely not what I want. But yes, I need to partake in the flavour analysis a little more before I can really make a judgement on this beer and I apologise to Leon for my gun lancing. Admittedly I was facing towards him and I could have abstained at that moment from actually shooting my gun lance but I did not. Fortunately I got my shot out there before Teostra could jump back. Beer showcase stream? You mean beer glass showcase stream? Uh, I wouldn't do that. I do have a lot of glasses though. Most of them appeared in my uh, original Skyward Sword Let's Play, but that doesn't exist on YouTube anymore. But yeah, like every single recording I was coming on camera in... in uh, not full body view technically, but much of my upper body, because I was standing up while playing, much of my upper body was there and every recording I would have this really nice Belgian beer with its correct glass on camera and it was good. I just did it for the sake of it, you know. It was the first Let's Play that I did on camera, you see, so. Oh, that, was an, that was a very interesting flash bomb in terms of the timing there. You haven't seen a beer this dark. It, it is pretty dark. This one is... Well, stouts in general are like this. 
That's just how stouts are. It's real fucking beer. Not that piss that people drink. In, well, many countries, honestly. Including Australia. In Australia, we love to drink urine. We really do. <clears throat> and there's a reason for that. It's not because we have some sort of urine fetish. It's because at one time, when our country first began, beer was literally used as currency. Now, when beer is used as currency, you tell me how high quality that's going to be. When we went from that garbage to beer that was actually drinkable, people mis mistook that for good beer. In actual fact, it was dog shit beer, which was put to shame in many European countries, but I don't know, we were a little isolated, so we didn't realize that. But that's a long story, and entirely theoretical, incidentally. Like, I've not done research on that, that's just my theory. What is not, however, theoretical is the fact that most Australian beer, particularly lager, is utterly repulsive. But anyway, I'm not going to get onto a topic about that. I actually had a viewer, like a regular viewer, who heard my opinions on beer and became so incensed that he became permanently passive-aggressive towards me until he just stopped watching me entirely. He was really upset, like he took personal events. And, um, yeah, I don't regret it. Because if you're going to take personal offense to something like that, he was going to get offended by something else that I had said at some point anyway. I, why was I back hopping away from that? Did I really think that I was going to get out of there fast enough by doing something like that? That really was, with the greatest respect to myself, fucking stupid. So, I definitely need to do better if I can. Which I can, and I know I can do better, but, you know. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that there are no excuses for that, and I need to improve. Oh, come on. That was entirely calculated on your part, Teostra. Oh, well, am I in range of that? No. Thank God for that. Oh, good flash bomb, I guess. Aha, uh -huh. it turns out that during that entire animation, from the moment that he begins... So the moment that he lands on the ground, he is flash immune. I thought perhaps after the explosion had taken place, he would be flashable, but it turns out that he is not. I was standing while playing because The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is a motion control game, and I felt that it would be funnier to do motion controls while standing up. Was it comfortable? No, not at all. You don't actually realize how tiring it is to record a video while standing until you do it. You know, 10 years at that time, I'd been recording videos and that was the first time that I had actually stood up while doing it and it was exhausting. I was doing like 40 minute recordings, I think, for that one. It wasn't good. They're actually fatigue mats that you can buy. Literally put a... They do it for standing desks, you see. Because, of course, standing for long periods of time is uncomfortable. That's, you know, a, a fact. I could have blast dashed away from that, but I... By the time I realized that that was an option available to me, I, I couldn't actually do it without the risk of getting hit. You see, so I decided to at least raise my shield. But I actually would have survived had I used Blast Dash as soon as I realized that I could have done that to avoid the attack. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, standing desks obviously require one to stand. And, uh, you know, just to be <laughs> painfully supererogatory. But the mats that you buy four standing desks are obviously very much padded so that you can stand for very long periods of time without being fatigued. That is how that works. Now, if I were to have something like that, why did I drink another cool drink? I meant to drink a max potion. Anyway, um, basically, 
the fatigue mats, I don't know what you would really call them, would probably be an option for me if I sought to do another Skyward Sword recording while standing, but am I really going to fucking buy something like that just to record a Wii game? <clears throat> Uh, it could be similar to a yoga mat. A yoga mat may not be as padded as one of those mats, but a yoga mat is similar in the sense that, uh, you know, if you've ever tried to do yoga on a hard floor, <laughs> uh, that's ill-advised. I'm not saying I have, but, you know. Uh, my dear mother was doing yoga before it was cool, you see. She she was doing it, you know, she had a collection of videotapes of yoga, so I grew up with that. And, you know, I know a thing or two about yoga, and I also know that you need a fucking yoga mat if you're going to do yoga. That's how that is. All right. Was that an interesting subject of discussion? Good. I'm glad that you are better informed after that. Ow. All right. If you've noticed, I have had Dragon Blast available to use for quite some time, and I'm going to actually take advantage of its abilities and effectiveness now. I'm going to shield this. Have I contributed all that much? I'm not really sure. That was not a question that anyone asked, but I would imagine that it's a point of discussion that's worth elaborating on. Faint and negated, right. I'm using the mobility of the gun lance to my advantage. That is literally the way that you move quickly with a gun lance if you feel the need to do such a thing. You do the forward advance attack. You know, the poor mobility of gun lance can really feel nasty sometimes and that moment that I was in right there, where I was clearly the, t the target of the Teostra's attacks, was an example of how uncomfortable it can be, because I literally have to stand there and just shield him. I can't very well run away. Maybe I could sheathe and try to run away, but the sheathing, at least with gun layers, maybe it's a, a mental thing, but for me, I feel like if I sheathe it, that's going to be the wrong thing to do. I'm going to be stuck there for ages and I'm inevitably going to be hit. So, yeah. Yes, Beans, while I did grow up with a knowledge of different yoga poses, you see. Would you call them poses? I don't know. There's another word, I'm sure. Um, yoga forms? No, doesn't matter. I think pose was the word. Oh, and there was, I remember there was one tape she had where there was a group of them, and they were standing on these pedestal, well, pedestal isn't the word, almost like circular altars. Altar probably isn't the word either, but it was, you know, my memory of it was like, oh, that was so 90s. It was so painfully 90s. The music, the, I mean, obviously I didn't have any concept of that at the time for fairly obvious reasons, but, um, yeah, I have a very clear memory of that, and, yeah, it was pretty... Pretty cheesy, but, you know, good enough. It was like four people doing yoga together with one person leading it, and it was, uh, it was good. And there was, a, there was another one where and there was a series with one particular woman, and she'd be doing yoga, like, in front of, like, a sunrise, and it was pretty good. But, um, you know, very zen, very, very relaxing. So, anyway. Uh, yes, we're talking about VHS tapes. My video collection, however, was rather different to hers. As you'd expect. I and fucking direct to video Disney movies and... Stuff I'd taped 
from the television. But, uh, anyway. Fun discussions. Uh, I don't actually know how much I actually contributed there. Possibly not very much at all. I felt like I could have done more. And certainly not dying would have been a nice way to contribute, but I didn't do that, so... Sorry, I suppose. Alright. Whoa, what was... Is that a screen that I've never seen before? I feel like I just fucking... What was that? What was that? I pressed... I literally pressed several buttons on my controller at once and arrived at a screen that I'd never seen before. It must have been... There must be an option to open a separate page on one of these screens and I accidentally progressed through it. Whatever. Did I clip it? Clip what? That very moment? No, because I'm not that quick at doing that. <laughs> Anyway. Let me top up my cool drinks. I did end up drinking more than I intended to. Nino is in the room. What the fuck? Did this guy actually join the room and wait? That's definitely novel. I don't think I've seen that in this community ever. And if I have, it was so long ago that I have since forgotten that it happened. But yeah, of course, by default, the rooms that you search where people are on quests are filtered out. And if people join a room, for some reason, where everyone's on the quest, they just look for a different room. Maybe he didn't have any other options. I don't know. That is possible. The capacity of my glass is smaller than that of the can, you see. So I'm constantly topping it up. If you're wondering if it's like, you know, the beverage equivalent of the magic pancake, it's not. Like it, the, the liquid will run out eventually. I'm not doing Teostra again. There is a disgruntled motorist outside, honking his horn, or sounding his horn, as they say in my country. Honk is slightly too juvenile for our culture. Meanwhile, we go around saying things like g'day mate, and saying arvo instead of afternoon. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a paradox there, you know. So, what's going on? We've got uh, Carleto, which must be the name of the cat, but I have zero desire to play with a cat. Saturnus, oh dear. Silverwind G3, no. Ian doing turns. These rooms are usually very oversubscribed, so I'm surprised that I've actually got a got a spot to join in. Well, that's the other possibility. Maybe that guy who joined while we were on a quest literally had no other choice. We'll see what Ian wants to hunt. He's using the Glavinous Heldenova. Naked Aggression. Well, if you say so, you could instead do the Hyper one, or post the Hyper one, rather. But if you only need that, then very well. The reason, of course, being that we will be doing this with a full team at some point. So, may as well post the stronger one. Whiskey has joined the room. I don't have whiskey, but I do have rum at the moment. I was gonna... As soon as I saw that, I was thinking of whipping out a whiskey bottle, but then I realised... Oh yeah, I don't have whiskey with me this week. Um... What would make this fun? I have fought Cyanotaur so many times in this game and in others, that I'm starting to run out of choices that are enjoyable. <laughs> Weapon choices, that is to say, that are enjoyable. Um. Alright, dual blades. 
Not because I never used dual blades against this monster, but because it's been a while since I last did it. <clears throat> so, that should make this a little more fun. Suzuka Akuro. We've got Rel, Whiskey, and Ian, as well as myself, needless to say. Of course, with this full team, we are going to absolutely beat down this monster. I would very much rather a hunt with the Hyper version. He's still going to get plenty of materials from this monster that are, you know, standard materials from G-Rank. Shogun Sianator, but he's also going to get the hyper stuff, which he may need at some point in the future. I say take the advantage, or excuse me, take the opportunity when you have the advantage. So, really, I didn't even intend to use the word advantage, and I quite awkwardly tried to shoehorn it into the amendment to what I had said incorrectly, and ended up with a sentence that was rather redundant. What I had actually meant to say was that he should take his opportunities when they present themselves. The opportunity, of course, being that he has a group of four fucking people. Okay? Thank you. <sighs> Doom Link. I ended up going in the wrong direction, by the way. I'm not especially impressed with this Imperial Stout. It's not nice to spend $15 on a beer and then go, eh, I'm not that impressed. But that's what I just did. No, it's not 15 American dollars. It's 15 less valuable dollars. But it's still a lot. So, you know, it's not that much less valuable than US dollars where it's not expensive. It, it, it's, it's, it's money, you know. It's a lot of money to spend on a single beer, and, uh, you know, it's not all that impressive. Is that a sleep? Okay. Who's using a sleep weapon? If that touches the monster... I'd love to... Fuck it, man, just do it. <sighs> I was wanting to break the claws there, and I think that did happen, but... Why he chose to place a trap there, I do not know. Of course it was going to wake up the monster. I don't actually know if... Uh, I would assume, and obviously also hope, that something hitting the monster that deals damage was the wake-up hit. And not indeed the trapping. That's all I have to say probably sounded that I had more to say. Or sounded as if I had more to say, but I didn't. In actual fact. I don't know if you saw, but that guy was assiduously attacking thin air. Good for him. Oh, well. There you go, Ian. Uh, San Miguel, I have heard of that. I have not tried beer by San Miguel. But, yeah, it was possibly alright, I don't know. I've seen it around, I think. I've seen it around in the import section, which is where you should go if you're in Australia. There are some good Australian beverages, I guess, but... I suppose cider is some of the only Australian stuff that I drink. I mean, there's good Australian beer. I'm wrong. I'm being an idiot. There are good Australian craft beers. They do exist. Uh, but not if it's a pale ale. Okay? Not if it's a... Uh, if it's a... A variant of pale ale, then sure. But if it's a standard fucking pale ale... Oh, uh, get it away. No, I'm just being... Awkwardly opinionated now. I mean, I'm actually intending to annoy someone in saying that, but... Yeah, I'm not a pale ale kind of guy. Despite the fact that seemingly everyone graduates from lager with pale ale. At the end of the day, better to drink that than lager, I guess. Fuck.
I was expecting more of a beatdown than that, to be honest. Of course, it was fast, but I was really expecting something even faster. This guy's hiding inside the skull. Oh, look. You know, this is technically a form of upskirting. Because I'm looking inside of the object that is intended to cover the private parts of this monster. And I'm currently gazing at very close range at the private parts of this monster. And it's, um, yeah. Definitely stimulating. Wow. This is the inner layer of the Cyanotaur penis. Alright. Hope you all enjoyed that. Again, highly educational, I would imagine. You now have a concept for the girth of a Cyanotaur penis. Probably incompatible with... Uh, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go there. That's quite, uh, quite crass. Alright. Well, crude, rather. Crude would be a more appropriate term. What? Apparently, <laughs> you clicked on the wrong Doom, apparently. You clicked on someone named Doomlies or Doom Lies. Maybe it's Doom Lies. I read it as Doomlies because it's one word, but maybe it's Doom Lies. Who is apparently streaming Elden Ring. Well, I'm not streaming Elden Ring, so. Uh, no, I literally bought one can of beer, Beans. I bought one can of beer. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So. Yeah, I mean. So many beers. Even so many good beers these days are in cans over here. I do prefer bottles, but. I'll take what I can get. If it's good, then I'll drink it. Um, I've probably been informed that it is my turn to post, but I shall be skipping my turn. Oh, sorry. Um, skip. I've been twice asked to post. Quite frankly, I don't think that much time has fucking passed. Or has it? Maybe lots of time has passed and I've been not paying attention at all. Anyway... You insist that his doom lies. Okay. Very well. Silverwind G2. Okay, mate. If you want. If you really want to do that. I think this is the single faint. Which is fine. But I'll bring a raw weapon. Mm, yeah, okay. That might make it fun. Greatsword against Silverwind. I don't recall the last time I did it, but... Might make the hunt a little spicier. Oh, excuse me, it is actually the double Silverwind. I neglected to read the quest requirements. Weakener will do me. Weakener and Supplier, that's a... That's a good pair of skills. Respectable. These guys are fucking ready to go. Sorry for making you wait, I suppose. I'll try to be a little faster next time. There's a certain depth to this beer, but you know what? The depth is lost because there's this aftertaste that I don't quite like. Could be a dark chocolate sort of aftertaste, which, you know, there's nice dark chocolate and then there's not so nice dark chocolate. It's like a, what I would describe as a not so nice dark chocolate aftertaste. I don't know. Uh, Whiskey is sending Chinese messages in the chat. Several of them, in fact. Uh, whatever. Uh, when I say several of them, he's currently sent four and we've only been in the quest for about 15 seconds, so... If he could fucking relax, that would be excellent. I don't need... Chinese reading material... ...while trying to play the game. I may as well aim for the tail. Hmm. 
you do have to love the already gigantic a Cantor broadsword, as it used to be called at least. Expanding into an even larger sword in this game. That's going to hit me unless it was aiming for someone else, which it happened to be. Ugh, stop doing this. I've hunted so many Silverwind, but quite frankly, because I've been specifically avoiding hunting them, it has been a while, so I can stand doing one hunt now. I have hunted in excess of a hundred of these. So, yeah, I definitely needed a break. This is becoming very annoying. Whiskey, would you like to perhaps line up with the trap so that we're not standing here, reducing the DPS of the entire fucking team on account of your laziness? All it takes is one fucking guy to just not commit, and it causes problems. As evidenced by how this has played out. I understand the philosophy. The idea is that, oh, well, if I commit to the trap, DPS will be lowered. But if everyone just fucking committed to it, we wouldn't be l lowering our DPS unnecessarily. The monster would get in the fucking trap. It is because Whiskey cannot align with the trap that this monster keeps attacking away from it. And now we have to... Does someone have a sonic bomb? Because he's not going to end up in that fucking trap, okay? He needs to be enraged, otherwise it won't work. Ian doesn't know this. Rel doesn't know this. He's literally... We can't allow him to walk into that trap now. This is the point. Oh, God. How annoying. People who can't commit to traps should just go and play solo. That's what I have to say to that. Just go and play solo. Thank God he became enraged. <laughs> Actually, can you do Moonbreaker? That was originally what I wanted to do. Can we not? It was lucky that he ended up being enraged by the time he got in here. I didn't even notice that he had become enraged. Just a single. Well, I suppose that was technically a non-charged swing. Whatever. It is a little bit hard to get a decent charge off against a monster like this with a greatsword. I'll give it a rest. We may get a mount soon if Rel is going for it. We've got another trap down. What is it? Shock trap? Okay. I will aim for that head with the... Oh, God. It's probably going to get hit out of it, right? Yep. Had a feeling. I wasn't going to contribute it. I wasn't going to contribute to the wake up myself, but I was anticipating it. Okay. I was certainly anticipating it. I could see that the team was getting a little bit into it. They were getting a little bit excited. So I assumed that they wouldn't notice that it was sleeping, even though it's bloody obvious. Only to my eyes, seemingly. Hello. I would like to brimstone slash you in the counter way. Like as a counter attack. That's how I want to explain that. <laughs> Very good. What a clean Moonbreaker attack. I wish that more of that was on camera. It was quite obvious what happened there. But. Fucking hell man. That's also pretty clean. You have to admit Brimstone slash fucking raw counter. That's the best way to do it because that's not going to deal damage to you, you see. But the raw can still affect your brimstone slash attack. Very nice. But yeah, while not all of what happened when I did Moonbreaker was on camera, it was... Uh, the result was clear and you fill in the blanks yourself. We got the tail cut, at least. And a shiny. Fuck off, man. Fucking Jagir. It's not much time to try. You're not... 
exciting anymore. You're just an irritating dinosaur creature. Some would contend that Jagia were never exciting, and maybe that is a dramatic word to be using. But seriously. This one is a lot bigger than the last one, at least from what I can tell. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the next charge. You can see I'm about to be punished for that. I should at least go for... Well, I should go for a single charge attack and then reposition. That would be the smart way to do it, you see? My request would be for you to leave me the fuck alone. Ugh. Thank god that wasn't on target. Some guy with a loud motorbike is riding around. Which may or may not have been audible. If it were not audible, then I apologise for drawing your attention to it. Ugh. Well, got to flinch out of that at least. I won't take full credit for that flinch. It looked like someone else was building up the damage there. Slightly off target, though. Hmm. Wasn't ideal timing there, but didn't get here. That's what matters. That's what matters. Ow. Ian has fainted. Which is unfortunate for him. But he's the first of the group to faint, so... We're not in any real danger or anything. Oh. I don't mind... F I actually do not dislike this hunt with Silverwind, because it has been long enough. I have gone without hunting this monster for long enough to be able to at least derive some enjoyment from the process of hunting it. But I don't think I would be willing to do it again anytime soon. This will have been enough for me for a little while. Give me a break. I only had one hand on my controller. At least I was able to get out of that. There you go. I just find Moonbreaker 3 to be such a satisfying hunter. Out. Hmm. See, I sort of delayed my roll there, but not enough. I do obviously have bludgeoner, so I am still dealing decent damage despite my yellow sharpness. Oops. There's nothing more annoying than when a monster falls over and what was previously an on-target attack that you were building up to deal ends up being off-target. That happens more often than you might imagine. Although, if you are a monster under player yourself, you may be able to attest to the fact that it does happen pretty regularly. It happens regularly enough. Maybe not all the time, maybe not every hunt, but it's the sort of thing that frustrates you enough, where that moment in time is permanently embedded in your mind. You may not remember precisely what time of day it was, or what you had had for breakfast that morning, but... You know, it's annoying, and... It's one of those things. That's called using 
fucking wind pressure as a brimstone slash combo, or counter rather. You could also say that I did incorporate that into my brimstone slash combo, I suppose. But I don't like referring to a, a single attack as a combo. It seems to, in fact, be an incorrect use of the word. You want me to cut this tail off? Um, can do, I guess. Has it? Oh, it has had its first break, so we'll try and cut this tail as well, but I'm not going to severely inconvenience myself to get it off. Put that on a shirt. I really should have said cut it off. That would not be able to be taken out of context in quite the same way. Ugh. Here we go. I'm cutting a tail with a blunt weapon? Okay, I'm doing the best I can. Oh. Well. Level 1 smash charge, still missed the tail in the end. If we don't cut it, it's not going to be the end of the damn world, but... Oh, you fucker. He's literally interrupting my roll slash. Because he's a, an insufferable individual. Not for any other reason, it's just because he's a, a grade A wanker. I guess. Maybe he was born that way. I'm not going to immediately cast judgement upon him. I'm just going to, you know, admit in the clearest of terms possible that he's a, an absolute bell end, you know. Ow. It's always nice to be on my hands and knees when I'm trying to actually hit the damn monster, but... Can't complain too much. I was on my hands and knees because they were indeed attacking the monster, which is what they should have been doing in that moment. Can't really complain, can I? I think the tail ends up here, right? Nope. <laughs> Does not end up here. But I did get a turnaround level 3 charge on the face, so I can't fucking complain, can I? Honestly, the size... Did you see the height of that purple effect that just shot out of Whiskey upon the activation of his hunter around there? What's it called again? It's... Ugh, I don't know. I've forgotten what it is. Doesn't matter. It would have been on my screen in the previous hunt, but I've forgotten it now. You all know what it is, so there is no confusion. I feel like I sacrificed a little bit of my DPS just to try and get that tail off towards the end, yet we still didn't get it off, so... Cut it off, Doom Link. Cut it off. There is an appropriate verb to be used. So use it. Sever the tail. Cut the tail. Separate it from the main body. There are many ways in which to describe this. Get it off is quite frankly inarticulate and inelegant. And you can do better. What's going on with you? Oh, I see. That is actually pretty fucking disturbing. That's some creepy stuff. Stand still for a little longer. I'm trying to- uh, I'm literally trying to get a good shot of you doing creepy things. And you keep spoiling it by moving around. If a guy stood in front of you... ...with a boar head... ...in that pose, and with that posture, and with that... ...effect... ...permeating from his body... That would actually be severely intimidating. Alright. Oh, 
All right, I'll top up my Mega Dash Juice. Why not? I may as well. You will take note of the fact that I do not often use Mega Dash Juice. I have become more conservative, more sparing in my use of Mega Dash Juice because there was a time when I had so much of it that I just didn't really care. I was, I suppose, profligate to the extent where it was almost negligent when it came to my use of Mega Dash Juice, but I reined myself in. I had an addiction. And the first step to the redress of addiction and the negative consequences of it is to admit that you had, or indeed have, an addiction in the first place. Alright. After that inspiring pep talk, I'm going to equip a sword and shield so that I can fight fuck knows what. Do I have a, like a blunt raw sword and shield? Do I possess such a thing? I have a question. Isn't there an Akantor Sword and Shield? I'm pretty sure there is, and if there is one, I'm probably going to fucking make it. Have I... Have I really not made it? Yeah, it exists, and I haven't made it. Am I for real? Why has it never occurred to me to use the Akantor Sword and Shield? Do I have an alternative to that? Maybe I have an alternative to that. I need to have a good look. Maybe it's never struck me as an option. I'm not seeing an alternative to that, so... For reasons beyond my reckoning, I don't actually have a raw sword and shield. Like a blunt raw sword and shield. I suppose the reason why is because sword and shield really isn't designed to be used in that way. It's always been better as an elemental weapon. You know, high affinity, high sharpness, high element. That's your sword and shield experience. It's not really a raw damage sort of weapon type, but... Is it worth making? I mean, I suppose it's worth making, isn't it? Fucking hell, I'm Hunter rank triple nine and I've got plenty of resources, so let's just do it. This feels weird actually crafting something after so long. I don't need Wyvern Crystals, so I'll do that. I'm not going to equip it yet, unless there's a Cantor Gem and Wyvern Crystals. Yeah, fuck it, man. And I'll equip it too, for good measure. What's this? Uh, oh, I think I've got enough. Yeah, looks like I've got enough. Okay, one more upgrade, presumably. Yes, two of 16 Conquest Spheres. I think I can spare them. Yes, I think I can spell. Oh, great. Wyvern Crystal is <laughs> in abundance at the moment. Alright, so I'm going to have a look and see if there is a blunt. This is a very ugly sword and shield. This is really not a good look. Um, what would I like to use? Blunt dual blades. Might, well, would blunt longsword work better for this? Let's have a look. You know what, blunt longsword would be fine. As an armor set, that is to say. I'm not being for- no, not that. The Cantor Purge, there you go. Alright, need to actually equip my Hunter Arts here. I hope these guys are willing to wait for me. I'm a-coming. I'm going to use my new, terribly ugly sword to fight a Hyperzamtrius. Ugh. No, I really don't have a comment in regards to that A gaming, because I know nothing about it. Or about that sort of thing. Alright. This is where the beer will continue to decrease in level. It is not the 
beverage equivalent of the magic pancake. Ugh. So there you go. The enjoyment is finite. Alrighty. So we have the Zamtrios to kill here. He is at least hyper, which is more appropriate for a team of 4G rank level people. That much I can say for sure. You know why my pinky's up, don't you? Look how much space my hand has to touch the fucking stem of the glass. This glass stem is very short. Very short. It's three fingers. Three fingers. So, like, what? It's, you know, it's... Do I touch the bowl of the, the glass? Or do I do this? Well, that is a bit... I suppose it's... I don't consciously do it. I suppose along the base of it is fine, yeah. No, but it's, uh, if I've got space to put my fucking finger there, it goes there. That is the point. But I will take greater care. In future. Oh, look at that. That was clean, except for the fact that I got hit. I'm sure this is fairly effective, it's just that, as I said, Sword and Shield is not really designed to be used in this way. I don't think it's going to be as good as some other weapons. Like, Longsword for this sort of thing? Great. Sword and Shield, not so much. Although I will say that for this particular Sword and Shield, the shield is huge. The size of this Sword and Shield... Shield... Well, I suppose the size of the shield for this weapon, there you go, that's a little less repetitive. Is almost as big as a lance shield. In fact, you could probably comfortably get away with having a lance weapon design that had a shield of this size. I tried to shield that, but my shield was too small, ha ha ha. It's not actually to do with the size. It's to do with how I have chosen to use it, or in that case, not use it. I tried to do it again, but I'm rolling towards the monster as it begins its roll, which gives me less time to raise my shield. I am doing my best. I will at the very least reassure you of that much, and then you can use that as your basis to form a judgement upon the quality of my play. The dorsal fin is great to hit if it is presented to you, but that seemed like a bit of a ruse, if you noticed. An, an opportunity was presented and I was immediately aggressed by the monster. My sharpness has depleted. It's also worth taking note of the fact that... Oh, actually I don't have sharpness. Uh, no, it's... This seems to be a low amount of green sharpness, even by a Cantor weapon standards, so... Yeah, it's not that I would typically have any sharpness increase when using these. That would be rather foolish. Because that would probably boost into blue, which I wouldn't want. If I could avoid it, I would avoid it. There are some weapons that I use blunt. That's asleep. Can you not? You just, you people cannot fucking help yourselves, can you? You just, you do not take care. You do not take any sort of cue, any hint. No indication whatsoever. I mean, it's right in front of your eyes. The monster was doing something and then suddenly started doing something else. And you don't even watch to see what he's doing before, you know, resuming your assault. You instead just 
blindly and mindlessly flail at the monster until it dies. Which is a strategy. But it is indeed a strategy that <laughs> can also be described as lack of strategy. I don't actually know if this monster can fall in a pitfall trap while inflated. I don't think so. In fact, I suppose the unwillingness of the team to try and get him into it may have already answered that question for me. Either that, or the team is just profoundly non-committal to getting this asshole in a trap. Oh no, he can fall in a trap, and he looks absolutely ridiculous. Look at him. Oh my god. This is so sad that it's not even funny. You know when something is just so embarrassingly gross and unpleasant to look at that it's not even funny? Well, that's how I would describe that. Maybe some of you would disagree. Maybe you felt that that was exceedingly humorous. I did not feel that way. My smiling face, however, betrays my inner feelings. No, it's It was not funny, it was gross. And I don't want to see it again. This sword is very fat. In fact, this sword is an appropriate sword to be using against a monster like this. Obese weapon for an- oh. Okay, fuck, I called him obese. Sorry. Shit. Take care with the words that you use in the presence of Zamtrios. Literally, as soon as I use the word obese, two of us, fucking dead dead. So, we actually need to be careful, otherwise we may fail this quest. Because I can't actually communicate with anything except shouts during this quest, because this particular port is a pathetic excuse of a stationary console monster under experience, I can only, indeed, communicate with those messages and cannot write the message that I would like to send, which is, I called him fat, so he killed me. And that would obviously be interpreted as a lame joke, but in actual fact, it's the truth. I called him fat, and he killed me. I'm sorry. It's not that you're fat, it's just you've made poor life decisions. You should be supported in your poor life decisions. Because it's all so hard, isn't it? Yes, it's all so hard. Have at it, man. Health isn't important. Fuck that shit. Hmm. Tie Attack. What a weird name. Maybe his name is Tyler or something. He's named himself Tie Attack. I don't know. Fuck. Why are we doing this again? Does it have to be this one? Please do the hyper. I'm not so desperate to do the hyper version that I'm actually going to ask him in the chat to post that. He says before proceeding to do just that. Now, he obviously doesn't want to, otherwise he would have done it, but I'm. this is my way of nudging him. I'm nudging him towards posting the hyper version, because again, we have a team that can comfortably get it done. And he's not really going to miss out on drops, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe in his own little mind, he would. <coughs> well, I suppose I can respect him for his sincerity. 
I guess he'd rather take less time to get it done. He, he says he's almost done, so I guess he only needs one or two more things, and he'd rather have it done sooner rather than later. And maybe in his own mind, especially after that previous hunt, he would imagine that posting a hyper monster would introduce unnecessary risk into his little plans. Um, what should I use? How about normal heavy bow gun? Where's my normal heavy bow gun? Where is it? Heavy normal. I almost never use this fucking thing. I use my normal loadout more frequently in 3 Ultimate than in this game. I don't have a particular reason as to why. It just doesn't cross my mind here. You don't see it very often either in this community. Someone running normal. It's not common at all. Fuck off, that's not what I intended to do. I will bring needleberries and huskberries. I wonder how long ago I purchased those needle needleberries. Can you not? I sincerely ask you to desist from doing pointless and stupid shit that I did not intend for you to do, character of mine. Alright, I'll bring not- it's totally unnecessary. I've brought combination materials for 99 level 2 normal shots. In addition to full normal shots in my inventory already. Plus, full capacity normal level 3. I somehow don't think I'm going to need that much for this single standard G rank hunt. It's just, a, it's just an inkling that I happen to have. But um, it may yet prove to be correct against all the odds. I'm taking the longest fucking route possible to get to this monster. The longest fucking route possible. There is actually a shortcut right here. And I'm going to avail myself of the shortcut so that I don't make myself look like a complete idiot. Oh, the sensitivity of the aiming is just all... It's all wrong. It's way too high. I think... I've said this before, I think it's better for it to be high sensitivity, but... God, it's uncomfortable when you're coming from... the first three generations of Monster Hunter. Of course, I quite often record three Ultimate, and in my own time I play a lot of first and second gens, so... Yeah... It's not that comfortable. This music honestly annoys me. I do not like this combat music. Maybe I can't hear it all that well. Maybe it sounds a lot better if you've got it in full detail. But just hearing it out of my shitty television speakers. Doesn't sound like a good combat theme at all, just sounds like... Pansy-ass garbage. That's what it comes across as. I don't really know how else to describe it. It just doesn't sound very good. I don't know. It doesn't get the blood boiling, you know. Maybe it sounds really good. I, for example, the Snowy Mountain combat song in this game sounds really good. It sounds really good, but it sounds like complete shit out of my TV speakers. So, <laughs> with that taken into consideration, maybe I should withhold any judgment of this song until I've actually heard the full thing. Because I suppose my TV speakers are betraying my ears. I will supernova you, but I'll wait until the appropriate time, which is now, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And I got the right positioning, too, because you noticed that the initial impact, if positioned correctly, will give you that uh, nice visual effect and sound effect to go along with it. Which is what I got, so... I'm trying to extend my invulnerability period, which actually backfired, because I 
got hit by the first attack, avoided the second one, but got hit by the third anyway. It may have actually been better in the long run to roll immediately and avoid two out of three as opposed to one out of three. This has been a more successful hunt than the last one, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not, maybe it's been about the same. If we don't one zone him, well we did. If we didn't one zone him, that would have been a travesty, but maybe it was about the same. Not sure. It could very well be that this was a more enjoyable hunt, so it went faster, in my mind. That is certainly a possibility. Oh, I'll show you my armor set that I'm using. It's very good. It's very good damage. But normal shots require good accuracy, you see. Some would see the Evade Extender skill to be unnecessary because they don't actually get it. <laughs> so many people haven't actually used Evade Extender with a heavy bow gun. It is so helpful. It increases your DPS because you're spending less time evading and more time fucking shooting the monster. And your survivability goes up immensely. The only reason not to use it is if you are committing to a stationary crouch fire loadout with a heavy bow gun. But if you're running and gunning, which is what I'm usually doing with a heavy bow gun, evade extender is the way to go. Always will be, in my mind. I've always been a vocal exponent of evade extender and its use. But I don't see enough people using it. And that's fine, like if, if it ends up being some hidden knowledge so be it. I don't care. No, oh, I have to... Do I have to mention that I'm skipping again? Yes, because Tire Attack is the third player this time. Skip. Our previous third player left as soon as his quest was completed. But you know what, I should mention, just for the record, that that guy did apologise before he left. He did two hunts, then did his own hunt, then left, but he did indeed apologise for doing it, because he acknowledged that it was a... as what they... Let me rephrase that. He acknowledged that it was not a nice thing to do. I've been live for... Oh, the host has finished doing what he needed to do. In line with essentially what he told me, which was that he's close. Or he was close. Good for him. Oh. Okay. Why not? Raging Brachydeus. I will remain ranged. I think ice is the better element for this one. Of course, standard Brachydeus is primarily weak to water, but as I suspected, raging is weaker to ice. So I will equip my ice light bow gun loadout. Hopefully, someone didn't leave. Oh, fuck you, people. Seriously, a decent fucking quest is put on the board and you leave. Get a grip, and Sephiroth can't even join. Also, why is your name Sephiroth? It's 2022, not 2006. Alright. Now, moving on. Ice light bow gun, that's my loadout. Look at this guy. The brass neck. Of this little turd is on full display. The 
that is not how it works. You dick. But I'm not going to add that part. I've said it verbally, I've gotten it off my chest. I'm going to tell him that that's not how this works. And he can fucking figure it out for himself if it's not already blindingly obvious that he has been kicked from the room for behaving like a fucking impertinent, puerile, mentally ill fool. You don't walk into a room where there is already an objective on the board. There is already, indeed, an objective set out in the room. And just put your quest on the board. In a silent expression of desperation for people to do your quest. It's stupid. Make a room, sit there, and people will help you. That's the, that is the situation. People will help you. But if you do shit like that, at least in my room, you're not going to be getting anything out of that. Because I'm not going to reward that sort of behavior. It's embarrassing. It's pathetic. Everyone, doesn't matter how experienced or inexperienced one is in the game and its online etiquette, which, by the way, has largely disappeared in this community. That is inexcusable. That sort of behavior is just... It's bottom of the barrel. Alright. Where are my ice crystals? Here they are. Uh, perhaps they're no longer used. In fact... I seem to recall that they're no longer used. What? That's right, they've changed it. How do I make ice shots again? I keep forgetting that they changed the combination. It's... Snow Herb. And according to my combo list, I've never combined for them before. Do you know what that means? It means that I've never actually had a situation occur where I have brought ice shots to a quest and then run out of them. <laughs> That's this game for you. Alright, let's go. Some people would see that situation with the Hunter Rank 8 and go, Oh, poor guy. He's just trying to hunt, blah, blah, blah. I have been dealing with this for like 13 years. I'm sick of it. People need to get a grip and realize that if we're already here doing our own thing, it's quite honestly selfish, discourteous, and downright foolish to turn up and expect people to do your thing without even saying anything, without even... Asking. Some people do ask, of course. They say, please do my urgent and all this. He didn't even do that. Didn't even have the decency to do that. His name's Sephiroth. I'm, I'm guessing he can at least speak some English. Maybe he can't, but... Seriously, I'm not going to dwell on it, but... I know that some people would not understand why that was so... displeasing to me. Uh, one of the things that makes Blademaster really nasty with this monster is the fact that if you've got a gunner, <laughs> the gunner is going to be constantly detonating parts of the monster on you. It is really not a good idea to use Blademaster against this monster. I wouldn't recommend it, but some people actually don't have any other choice. They don't have ranged loadouts. You can see, obviously, that Tire Attack is not even willing to get in and attack the monster. It's his quest, and he feels unable to contribute because he's using an inappropriate loadout. That's his choice. That was his choice to do that. 
so, you know, I don't feel sorry for him or anything. Maybe to his benefit that he's practically leeching. Low effort, but you're still going to get a quick victory nonetheless. Because by the looks of it, we've got two pierce gunners and one elemental gunner. The elemental gunner being well optimized. So, there you go. I'm not going to speak to the degree of optimization of the light bow gunners shooting pierce. Oh no, actually, we've got one light bow gunner shooting pierce and a bow guy. I thought we actually had two people running pierce. That's fine. Maybe the bow guy is running pierce. But anyway, doesn't matter. I'd like to hit the face. You see, I can't fucking see anything. If you're going to flash bomb, please have it be on target. Because if I can't see anything for like a full second... Why are you flash bombing now? Can you please watch to see what's taking place in the hunt? I really was expecting... The mount to take place before the roar. It looked like it was going to... Transpire that way, but it really didn't. Missed that shot. Embarrassingly enough. Shit. I've missed like three shots. Should have done a dive there, honestly. Well, I can do better than that. You can see how quickly this monster can close the distance. And just swing a punch in your face. Get out of my way, please. <laughs> I say after he got thrown to the ground. <laughs> Maybe I should be a little bit more supportive of my teammates. Stop. God. You can see I just have to watch carefully to see what the monster is doing because if I start committing to shooting the monster very quickly, I'm going to be punished. Because it's only a matter of seconds between that moment when the monster's not even looking at you and the moment when the monster's punching you in the fucking jaw. So, not fun. I'm now at the point where I'm shooting rapid fire, which means that my... Vulnerability period has increased when shooting. Because obviously I need to shoot three rounds before I can do anything after that. Whoa! Don't know who you're jumping at, but that shit's scary. Jumping from a stationary position. Is frightening precisely because it's not telegraphed at all. It just happens and you're like, whoa god, that's scary. It also introduces that idea of the monster being unpredictable, which, you know, furthermore introduces the sentiment of uncertainty. I'm actually used to having more than three shots coming out of a rapid fire. Three feels like less than it should be at this point because I usually use bonus shot in conjunction with a rapid-fire loadout. Not this particular set, though. Accuracy is going down because... Well, obviously it's going down. Rapid-fire is less accurate. It's just how it is. If you don't agree, well, give it a try. Monsters move. And when you're shooting rapid fire, you can't reposition those shots. They shoot 
where you were aiming when you shot them. And if the monster's moving, it's not going to stay on target. So there you go. Rapid fire is less accurate. That's the reality. Go away. Of course, the fact that rapid fire shots do last longer is still helpful. Less accurate, but I feel like it takes longer to shoot them all. Feel like I'm contributing for longer. Three shots feels so inadequate when you are almost invariably using bonus shot with your light bow gun loadouts that use rapid fire. I think one of the fists just broke. I don't know, maybe something else broke. Or it was just a regular flinge. I thought I heard or perhaps saw something break, but obviously I didn't. I'm surprised this monster is still alive. Maybe not that surprised. But I felt at least between myself and Oliver Pan, we would have dealt quite a lot of damage. I'm actually going to bullet geyser here. Deal some fucking damage, you know. Because I'm obviously not using bullet geyser as an evasive attack, so may as well use it and then build it back up. See, that's scary. When he just suddenly lunges at you without any warning whatsoever. Whether he's on target or not, it's frightening. I feel like that was a good round of shots. Well, this may be one of the first quests where I actually need to... No, I'm not going to do that yet. <laughs> See? I was going to say, this may be one of the f Well, it would be literally the first quest where I had to combine for ice shots. But no, we killed the monster. Even then, I was ready to whip out my slicing level 2, which is still very effective, of course. Possibly even more so than my ice shots. But yeah, it wasn't necessary for me to combine. In the end. <sighs> Cosmos found that hunt to be fantastic. I don't think we had a death in the end, which means that I would, on the whole, concur with that statement. Nice work. I'm trying to perform a jump, but I don't want to end up falling, you see. There's some sort of enjoyment that I'm getting out of that. I'm not sure what it is, but... That is what I'm experiencing. God, I have to record for another 30 minutes. Just going to see how this coincides with my um, friend that I watch anime with. Uh, shit. Fuck, he came home early. Damn. Does that mean I'm going to have to record less? Am I going to abandon you guys to watch anime? Uh, should I or should I not? I'll do one more hunt, okay? 
I'll do one more. It'll be less than two hours, but fuck it. Man. I suppose we are leaving the next hunt in Cosmos's hands. Or perhaps he will skip, as I usually do. We'll find out. I suppose I'll have to write it out. I'm not going to pester him to post, but I'm just going to put it in the chat. Oh, he's willing to... Oh, is that the ancient bow? It sure is. I don't know if that's worth using, actually. I'm still not too sure how I feel about those. Even with bitter affinity. I really don't know if that would be good enough. I'm really not too sure about that. It's interesting and it's fun and you can tell that he's using this loadout because it's interesting and fun, but... I don't know if it's actually good damage or not. It's hard to know. It's hard to know. What's mine is mine. Hyper Urugam. Very well. I'll use... Something weird, you know. What would be fun? Do I have blunt water sword and shield? Something like that, you know? Here we go. Imperial brand. This is nice. It's been a bit of a sword and shield day, hasn't it? Having to manually equip Hunter Rance is frustrating, but I'm beginning to get used to it. It's not too bad. There you go. I will remove these huskberries from my inventory. I have no need for them at this stage. My damage is not very high in terms of water, but still. Um, it's a bit of water damage, and you know what? The raw damage is going to be pretty high. So I'm happy with them. I even get a little bit of extra defense from this particular weapon, so I can't complain about that. This is good fun. I enjoy Blunt Element. Of course, as I've explained in the past, but I'll explain it again for those who are unaware, because I can't actually get Awakened Weapons in this game, my alternative, my equivalent to Awakened Weapons here in this game is Blunt Elemental Weapons. It's essentially my way of having an alternative to my choice of, let's say, Water Sword and Shield. I don't want to use my standard Water Sword and Shield, which is probably Odyssey. I can use this instead. It's all about that variety in the end game. I need that sort of thing to properly enjoy myself. I was used to it with Awakened Weapons, and then they disappeared, and I had to find other ways to... <laughs> I suppose, branch out. I wouldn't necessarily seek to be ineffective with my weapon choice. But if it's a little less effective than the standard weapon choice that I would have, then so be it. Because it's fun to get that damage in some other way. Some other unique way. It's not good enough for it to just be an alternative weapon. There needs to actually be a, a setup attached to it. So in other words, using an armor skill to get an element out of the weapon that would otherwise be a raw weapon. In other words, awaken. In this case, I require the blunt or bludgeoner skill to get the proper damage out of this very low sharpness sword and shield. 
So it really is the next best thing to awaken, in that sense. Oh, goodbye Oliver Pan, and that also hit me as well. It wasn't the most damaging part of that particular attack, obviously, but... Yeah. In other words, it could have been a whole lot worse. Um, thanks. Ow. This is not a nice place to fight an Uragan. This is really... I wouldn't go so far as to say claustrophobic, but it just doesn't have enough space for us to comfortably move within. At least not in my opinion. Please don't upswing me, man. I don't know how the fuck I managed to avoid that, but I did. I somehow, in expressing my trepidation, was able to do a very fancy maneuver to avoid that upswing. I'm pretty sure I iframed it. I may have not. I don't know if you get an iframe when you do the little back charge with the sword and shield, but if you do get an iframe or two or three from that, I guarantee that's how I avoided being upswung. In which case, that was fairly cinematic and also rather adroit of me, even if it were not entirely intentional. Bludgeoner with the Akantor horn sounds really good. Sounds very nice. How the fuck did that still hit me? I'm really unimpressed with that. This is the one time where I can actually countenance an upswing from you, but fortunately it wasn't such a thing. Chaos Oil. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'd best avoid this one with a shield. Sword dance that motherfucker, go. Do it. Well, I missed much of that, but whatever. Now I wanted to do one of those aerial attacks. I'll show you what I mean. One of these motherfuckers. And then I immediately get hit by a fucking shoulder check. Tie attack is dead. We are one faint away from failure. This is not how I was expecting this particular hunt to go. Also, I suppose I should say hello to you, Grim Tusk. Well. I could be attacking the face, but I'm, well, I'm technically hitting the face a little bit here, but my primary target is the front legs, front arms, I guess. If I call them arms, it is redundant and unnecessary to refer to them as the front arm. I can't fucking see. It is unnecessary for me to refer to them as the front arms, because there are no rear or back arms. Those are legs. Which was at one time the subject of a very humorous conversation between myself and Ethan. Which I don't care to get back into, although he would absolutely launch himself right back into it if I reminded him of it. He would immediately press me in the most interrogative of terms as to what I mean by legs and arms in relation to a monster. So, yeah. He would do it from a, a cold start as well, like Hasn't been mentioned in a year. As soon as I would mention it, he would just absolutely launch himself into it. And then we'd be right back where we started. With no consensus. And with uh, bitter differences between us. Irreconcilable differences. Ugh. Alright, that's fine. It's just I knew that I'd get pushed off this, you see. And I wanted to do my sword dance, and I'm doing it anyway. I'm following my dreams, okay. In that 
particular moment it was my sincerest desire and wish to use sword dance and I didn't. So you can't say I didn't try, okay? You can't say I didn't follow my dreams. I did what that fucking LaBeouf guy, or whatever his name was, would advocate with a strength of feeling unrivaled among his peers. Just do it! Whatever he said. I didn't, okay? So. You can't say I didn't. I never watched that video, you know? That stupid motivational video. I don't know if it was meant to be a joke. If it wasn't meant to be a joke, then I'm all the more happy that I never watched it. I only saw, like, I guess, GIFs of it with no audio. You know, I never watched it. It was... It's not my cup of tea, you know. I'm not so lacking in motivation that I need some guy yelling at me to just do it. I mean, it's so... <sighs> Really, words fail. It, it is self-explanatory. Like, if I need someone to tell me to just do it, and yell at me, then there are probably more fundamental issues going on here, which may or may not actually be solvable through some guy yelling at me in a video. Maybe I'm a pot smoker or something, but... Which, for the record, I'm not. I'm just saying that if I were lacking motivation to such an acute degree, maybe I'm a pot smoker. I don't know. Can I just say that I will never, ever go with the flow when it comes to the widening acceptance of the use of marijuana? If people want to do it, sure. But I... I've interacted with people who smoke it, and uh, yeah, don't like them, sorry. I don't like the personalities, and I don't like what they are because they smoke it. And they, they seem to take it in many respects as an opportunity to, like they think that they have bragging rights. It's like, yeah, I smoke pot, man. I smoke weed, or give me weed, you know. They actually boast about the fact that they love it, and it's like, well... Alright, get your fix and shut up. Like, I don't really need to be involved in your substance habit. I don't care. Smoke it and shut up and we'll be sweet. Seriously. Anyway, that's a subject that I needn't go on, especially considering that I've got several stoners who watch me regularly. Who, of course, feel the need to inform me of the fact that they're high every time they're watching me, but... You know, it's the same sort of idea. You know, I don't... I don't come into chat saying, I'M DRINKING RIGHT NOW! <laughs> I, I function as a normal person and drink. Uh, if you can't do that while smoking pot, then that's your thing. But I don't think the world needs to know that you've just had a joint. I think we can all quite safely and comfortably live our lives without knowing. Anyway, that is all that I have to say, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. I'm cutting the live stream short because I'm keeping my friend waiting. We watch anime every night, and I may have started this live stream a little too late. But um, I did get one hour and 50 minutes, approximately, um, recorded, which is probably good enough. I thank you all for watching, and I will bid you all farewell for the moment. See you next time.